All right. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is February 27th, 2020, and I'm not going to waste too much time getting into this. I've redone it, rewritten, done some edits, and trying to get this done again within that 30-minute time frame. Uh, we did the first one, which was uh, the End Time Gospels Revealed. This one is the 14 years. It is the End Time Introduction to the Years. So let's get into it. We ended the first video, the first introduction video called Intro into the End Time Gospels Revealed, which is about the first great revelation received here with your hint is six work and the seventh rest twice. I'll show that to you here. <clears throat> this is how we ended that first one to get people ready on thinking in this second one. And the reason for and the reason for that was because we see six seals and the seventh rest. And then we see six trumpets and the seventh rest. But at the seventh rest of of trumpets we see everything is now the lord's so let's get into exactly what that means and why it's one of the most important pieces to not only better understanding but also to having the scriptures literally open up to you including what it means for everyone who will be left behind which will include also those we refer to as the sleeping church I referred to this revelation in the first teaching as the second great revelation this ministry received. And from these two revelations, everything else came into understanding. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, have heard the term before, sleeping church. Most every pastor and teacher speaks about this group. They're the ones referred to as not ready to meet the Lord but believe in him they they claim they love him but they don't change their ways they don't repent from their sins and they're not watching and praying etc so the question becomes if the rapture comes first but the whole church clearly isn't ready as they themselves teach how can the rapture come first and the majority of this church that's sleeping not be ready to go what happens to them because everything taught after the rapture, we've been told, is Jacob's trouble. However, the period of Jacob's trouble is also taught as not being for the church Gentiles. And that's true. So how is the rest of the church, the majority of it, going to wake up during a period of time that's not for them? This is what has caused or what has been the confusion for generations. This is what has caused pre, mid, and post thinkers to separate themselves from each other and people to think maybe half go first. Maybe everybody who simply says they believe in Jesus will go at the beginning. In the first intro video about the Gospels Revealed, I showed how so much of this also stems from having been taught end times only from the perspective of Matthew's Gospel and not from all the Gospels. Well, in this portion of the seven twice, you'll see the greater understanding and come to see once and for all that the sleeping church will remain for their portion before Jacob in his portion of trouble begins. And it began with a verse we actually covered, uh, we read over in the first intro because I was saving it for this one. It's all from 2 Corinthians 12 too. This is where it started for me after the revelation of the Gospels. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. This is what caught my attention. Let's read the rest of it. Whether in the body or the body, I cannot tell. Such as one caught up, the word harpazo, to the third heaven. And I knew such a man. So now it's another time, a second time. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, how that he was harpazoed, but this time into paradise and heard unspeakable words and so forth. Go down to verse 14. It then says, behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. 
and I will not be burdensome unto you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. So what are we seeing here? We see Paul as a type and shadow of Jesus, and the chapter is about him coming a third time. He starts off by telling them the first time was above 14 years ago. And it was an event that was like a harpazo or rapture. Then he tells them the second time was a harpazo or rapture. And he also says the first time this one went to the third heaven. Whereas the second time he says this one went to paradise. Yet when we go down to verse 14, as he continues to who he has been addressing since the start of the chapter, he tells them, the third time I am ready to come to you. So now he's coming to them. Okay? And it all began with him saying, above 14 years ago. While speaking to them in the past tense and telling them there were two events that have taken place before my coming to you the third time. So you can understand after having understood the first revelation of the Gospels and knowing now there are three groups that are being addressed in the end times that this really caught my attention. But why on earth was he telling them if it started above 14 years or why was he telling them it started above 14 years ago? I thought the, the tribulation was only seven years and the rapture was first. This then brought me to Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, we see the same words used as the second time Paul was speaking about when he said, was caught up, the one to paradise. In Revelation 12, 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Same words, caught up, caught up. So based on what Paul was saying, this is the second time. Because this, uh, this one is the was caught up. And not the first that was like caught up sort of caught up so then we have to ask ourselves when is revelation chapter 12 uh, chapter 12 verse 5 especially since paul is telling us this is the second one well if we read the first four verses of revelation 12 we should get a better understanding so let's have a look we all know revelation 12 1 a woman crowned 12 stars verse 2 and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. Verse through 3, and there appeared another uh, wonder in heaven, a great red dragon. Verse 4, and his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Well, when we go back to verse 2, we see travailing in birth and pained. The word travailing in birth is the Greek word 5605, which is also from 5604 to experience pain, preturation, and that's the 05. The G5604, a pang or a throw, especially of childbirth, pain, sorrow, and travail. Remember these descriptions. And the next one, which was end pain, the description, the word is the Greek word 928 to torture, pain, toil, torment, to toss, vex. So knowing this all comes before the was caught up, which is in verse 5, which represents the rapture, how can the rapture be pre-trib when it's after all these things in the first four verses? Let's look at them. Starting in verse 2, we see she, bring, she begins her travailing in birth and is in pain, but we've been taught the rapture happens before she travails. 
as we read in Isaiah 66, verse 7, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain, she was delivered of a man-child who has heard of such things and so forth. We've all been taught this scripture as the rapture of the church pre-trib. But I just showed you, all backed by scripture, that the rapture isn't before her travailing in pain, but after. Yet, we just read in Isaiah 66, 7, it said, before these things. So let's keep going and seal the understanding of where this time is. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 4, we saw stars from heaven being cast down to the earth. Where else do we see stars of heaven being cast down to the earth? In Revelation chapter 6, verse 13, And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And when is this? Toward the end of the sixth seal. And at the end of it, when the sixth seal is over, what do we see? Revelation 6, verse 16. And said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. See, sits on the throne. That rings a bell, doesn't it? Revelation 12, verse 5. So we see from him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, which is also Revelation 12, verse 5 that we just showed, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. The Lamb is there as well. Then, at the end of that verse, Revelation 12, 5, then the was caught up, the actual rapture. Remember, God's law gives us the answer. Six work and the seventh rest. What did we just see here? Six years of seals and after in the seventh year of rest, the rapture. The seals are for the sleeping church testing and purifying to get refined by fire and become part of the great multitude as we read in Revelation 7, verse 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations and kindred and people and tongues, stood before the land, uh, sorry, stood before the throne and before the Lamb. And what did we just read at the end of the sixth seal? He that sits on the throne is coming down, and so is the Lamb. And the Lamb is to do what? Rule all nations with a rod of iron. So now then, we need to find the pre-trib. Because this has been proven. This has proven out to be the mid-trib or after seals rapture. So, when this portion of Isaiah 66, 7 speaks about before the pain and travail that is going to be brought forth, the answer is 1 Corinthians, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2. Above 14 years ago, the one who was like a caught up. This is the one, Isaiah 66, 7 is speaking about the one who will go before everything breaks out. The one we've been taught is pre-trib. But who are the like caught up? Because they're obviously now not the rapture group of the great multitude. Well, who do we know from Scripture that escapes all these things that shall come to pass? How about Luke 21, verse 36? Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Who are they? They are who Luke is speaking to. Light, 
gorgeous robe, bride of Christ standing before him. To understand this better, watch the first intro video to the gospel's understanding that's linked at the beginning of this teaching. They are the pre-trib bride of Christ who escape all things. When will they escape and where will they go? Again, 2 Corinthians 12 too. You see how powerful this is? I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Where did they go? It was like a rapture, like a caught up to the third heaven. This is what I was saying. You seeing how powerful this is? Now let me show you the many places it's crystal clear in telling us about this time frame. Let's go to the most telling verse of all that has never been fully understood until this revealing began. I call it the macro view, the verse that gives us the big picture. Psalms 90 verse 10, the days of our years are three score and 10, 70. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, which is 80, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. This strength that they would have to make it through is labor and sorrow. Remember those words we spoke about earlier. You'll see them in a minute. For it is soon cut off and we fly away. It's telling us a generation, the days of our years are 70. However, if you have the strength to get through 80 years, that strength is going to be labor and sorrow. The word definitions are labor, the Hebrew word 59.99, to toil, uh, that is weary, miserable, pain, perverseness, sorrow, travail, trouble. The word sorrow is the Hebrew word 205, to pant, usually in vain. Uh, the words trouble, wickedness, specifically of an idol from the words affliction and evil so what is it saying these 10 years will be tribulation those are the definitions of the words tribulation and affliction the same words used in revelation 12 verse 2 for travail and pain then we see for it is soon cut off. This is a short period of time being referred to as soon, which is about six months. And at this point, it's now cut off. Where can we show this period of time during tribulation? Daniel 9. You may recognize the same wording, cut off. We find it in Daniel 9, 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself. This will be part of the next intro video we'll do, God willing, of Daniel's end time understanding. But for this purpose, I'm showing it to let you know this is the same time being spoken about. You'll understand more uh, once you see that teaching. And what comes right after soon cut off? We fly away. So we have a period of time to this point of about 10 and a half years, 70 to 80, and then about six months. And then a reference to fly away. What's the most well-known end time verse on flying away? I'm sure you guessed it. Revelation 12, verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. This is that time spoken about. It's the same one being spoken about. And how long do we have here? Three and a half years the time they'll be protected in the wilderness until it's over. So let's put Psalms 90 and 10 all together. 70 to 80 years is affliction, travail, pain, sorrow, labor, tribulation. 10 years. Soon is a short period of time 
after the 10 years to where they will be cut off six months. Fly away is the duration of time they'll be protected in the wilderness, three and a half years. Total, 10 plus a half plus three and a half years, 14 years. This is a good place to remind everyone this is just the introduction to this revelation and that in the ministry at the ministry revealed website youtube channel facebook and twitter accounts you'll have all the rest that has come to be revealed over the past two and a half years the scriptures reveal it everywhere so sip of coffee now let's bring this home with these two final examples the first is the story of Noah and the ark. In starting in Genesis 8, 6 through verse 12. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark. Verse 7, he sends forth the raven that never returns. Verse 8, he sends forth the dove. But in verse 9, the dove finds no rest. And she returned unto him in the ark, for the waters were still upon the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in and pulled him unto him into the ark. Verse 10. And he stayed yet seven days. And then again sends forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came to him in the evening. And lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed still another seven days and sent forth the dove again another time and it did not return. We see here in verse 7, the raven, which is the Hebrew word 6158, a raven from its dusky hue. It comes from the word 6150, Arab. The raven is is an Arab. It goes out and never returns. It's then followed by the dove, which of course we know and understand is the Holy Spirit. Next we see the dove returning and being pulled into the ark, or we can say heaven. So the Holy Spirit is sent out and then returns. Think Acts chapter 2. We know it's coming again. We know Acts chapter 2. We call it Acts 2.0. It's going to play out again even more powerfully. This is that reference. But then we see after seven days, which is a type and shadow for years, the dove is sent out again. But this time when the dove returns, it has an olive leaf. And the Hebrew word is 5929, a leaf as coming upon a tree, a branch, or leaf. And this leaf, it says, was plucked off. This should ring a bell for rapture people. Because the word for rapture, which is harpazo, means to seize, catch away, catch up, pluck, pull, take by force. Right? The uh, Greek will say to pluck to pluck out of the way, to pluck by force out of the way. Then we see the dove remains in the ark yet again seven more days or years. Then is sent forth again, but this time it says it never returns. It remains on earth. This should ring a bell as well for those who watched the first intro video of the end time gospels. We're at the end of Matthew 28, verse 20, right at the end of his entire book. Jesus says, And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So what do we see? We know Noah and his family got in the ark already. Escape of the bride. Then we have 40 days, followed by the dove being sent out and returning then waiting seven years, and a group plucked or raptured, followed by seven more years, and the dove going out again 
and not returning. So what do we have? We have bride Luke into the ark, then 40 days. Dove sent out as Acts 2, then returns to the ark or heaven. Dove waits seven years, then goes out and brings back the sleeping church, Mark, raptured. Dove waits seven more years, then goes out again and never returns. Matthew, kingdom on earth, the thousand years. And it ends in verse 13. And it came to pass in the 600th and first year and first month, in the first day of the month, after the 14 days or really years, it's over. Remember what Paul said we were talking about earlier in 2 Corinthians 12 too, how important that verse is, that the first time was above 14 years ago. Where do we just see the escape of the bride? When they entered the ark 40 days before the 14 years, or in other words, above 14 years ago. Paul was speaking as if having come at the end of the final seven, when the dove never returns, just like that, from Genesis to Corinthians, this stuff reveals itself, reveals itself, and is put together. This stuff is awesome. And let's finally, and finally, let's have a look at Abraham's story with his two sons. You'll see that as much as the years are a big part of the understanding, who the sons clearly are representing and when play a confirming role in proving the understanding is true. Starting in Genesis 16, verse 11, and the angel of the Lord came and you shall name your first son Ishmael because the Lord has heard thy affliction and he will be a wild man and his hand will be against every man and every man's hand will be against him. We know who Ishmael is. The Arabs, right? The Arab. He is the affliction. The Hebrew word 6040. Depression, that is misery, affliction, trouble. We go to verse 16. And Abram was four score and six years. He was 86 years old when Hagar bare Ishmael. We see here, and then I just repeat it again. We see that he was 86 years old when he has Ishmael. When we go to chapter 17 of Genesis in verse 1, and when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee. Go down to verse 24, Genesis 17. And Abram was 99 years old. When he was circumcised. Verse 25, and Ishmael his son was 13 years old. So what do we have? He started off at 86 when it Ishmael. He's now 99 when he makes a covenant with God. God makes a covenant with him. That is 13 years later. And just to confirm, Ishmael, we're told, is 13 years old. We clearly see the 13 years. Uh, we clearly see that 13 years later. God made a covenant with Abraham when he was now 99 years old and Ishmael was 13 years old. This portion at 13 years is also revealed in Daniel 9 and Daniel 12. But as mentioned earlier, that will that won't be part that will be part of its video, okay? Not part of this video. Then we see Then sorry, then we see in Genesis 21, continue with Abraham's story, and Abraham was 99 years old, or sorry, was 100 years old when Isaac was born unto him. At 100 years old, we see Abraham receives his promise, Isaac. 14 years and the promise comes. Like the ark, the raven Ishmael was given 14 years before the end came. The promise, Isaac, Ishmael, the Arab, his hand will be against everyone and everyone's against his. And 14 years later, the time of the promise 
and the end of the days, it will be the promise, feet down on the Mount of Olives. I pray you are seeing the importance of these revelations coming into understanding from this ministry. I don't know why this ministry, but one day soon we will. Do you understand why I said one day soon? It will all begin after 70 years. Spring 2020, right now in this season we're coming into, the 70 years ends. So please, everyone, get your spiritual houses in order. We are at the door, about to stand before the Son of Man, and the 14 years is about to begin. These are but a few examples. There are many more I'd like to get into, but I just don't have the time within this 30-minute intro teaching. So know that there are many more, all covered in other teachings we've done. And for more of that, go visit our YouTube channel, website, Facebook, and Twitter. I love you guys. God bless you. I pray he comforts and watches over us and all of our families. I know I'm a minute or so over, but this one was the best I could do in that 30 minutes and prove in about five different places that the 14 years from Genesis to Revelation is indeed true. I love you guys. God bless you. Bye for now.